I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Last week, I gave you Passover recipes. So, to be ecumenical, join me for recipes to celebrate Easter, including a whole roast fish, a cauliflower side dish, and to top it all off, a scrumptious strawberry shortcake. So don't move, Sofalo Taste is next. and welcome to Soflo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. It's Easter time again and this year I'm hoping it will be more like Easter's of years past. So, with Easter dinner without much of the pressures of COVID from the last two years, I thought it would be fun to give you an Easter dinner to share with family and friends. So let's get cooking. Have you ever made a whole roast fish at your house? If you haven't, you really should, because honestly, the best way to eat a fish is whole. All you need is a really good fresh fish. So where to get a fresh fish? I always go to my friends over at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. They not only have the most beautiful poultry, they have incredible, beautiful fish like the snapper that I'm using today. They also have dolphins, salmon, grouper, stone crab, shrimp, scallops, clams, oysters, mussels. Just go to DelawareChicken.com, call them at 954-983-6831, place an order, pick it up at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. Tell them I sent you and send them my love and a happy Easter to all of them. All right, so I got this snapper, and look at this beauty. So you can ask them to clean it up for you, like trim the fins and things like that. They, of course, gut it, and it's beautiful. If you look how clear the eye is, it's just incredibly, incredibly fresh. So I actually like to trim the tail a little bit too, just because they can get a little kind of pokey. The next thing I'm gonna do is just score the skin so that I can rub in all the flavor that I wanna give the fish when I roast it. So taking a nice, sharp, small knife, I'm just gonna score the skin in two directions to make a nice X. And that way I can get all the flavor and I've already done it to the other side. All right, so when it comes to flavor, I'm gonna go a little bit Middle Eastern with my flavors. I'm gonna put a lot of oil and I'm gonna do this on both sides of it. Some kosher salt, black pepper, and then I've got sumac, which comes from a berry. It's nice and tart. It's really a delicious seasoning. You'll find it a lot on Israeli or Middle Eastern food. I also have za'atar, which is dried mint and sesame. Sometimes it has a little thyme in it as well. The whole reason why I scored it is so that you can really rub all these flavors into the flesh. We're gonna do that again, but I'm gonna do it over here because I don't wanna get rid of all that good flavor onto my towel. So again, the oil. It's funny, you know, I've caught the attention of a couple of the guys here that happen to be fishermen. And usually they don't really watch me making recipes, but I noticed that today, Frank is giving special attention to me making this fish today probably because he hopes to do this at home. Am I right, Frank? <laughs> All right, the za'atar and the sumac. And these spices, by the way, if you can't buy them at your regular grocery store, you can find them at maybe a little more upscale, but not too upscale, because a lot of people are using these flavor nowadays. They're just wonderful flavors, and they go with everything. The last thing I'm gonna do is stuff the cavity with some herbs, and it doesn't really matter what you use because everything makes it taste good. Here I've got dill, I've got tarragon, and I've got some thyme. I also really love rosemary because it's more aromatic than others. So I'm gonna put a piece of rosemary in there as well so that as it cooks, what's it gonna do? It's just gonna permeate the flavor. All right, then I'm gonna take a lemon and slice it into little thin slices. Keep the skin on, the whole thing on. Just like three slices like so. And then put these in there as well. Let's go ahead and put it into a really hot oven. At home, I would say to go into about a 425 degree oven. And always put it on a rack like this so that it doesn't stick to the pan and you don't get one side more beautiful than the other. So 
So let's quickly jump into the sauce that I'm gonna serve the fish with. Bright flavors bring out the freshness of fish. So I wanna teach you real quickly how to make a salsa verde, a green sauce. Now there's two salsa verdes. One is Mexican, which we're not making today. The other is Italian, okay? So I just need a little bit of lemon juice, which I started squeezing when you all arrived. All right, here's a mortar pestle. We're gonna make everything in here, okay? I've got some chopped up parsley, Italian parsley for this because it has a bit better flavor. I've got uh, two cloves of garlic, minced, some capers, and some kosher salt. Before I put in anything juicy, I'm gonna go ahead and use my mortar pestle to just break everything down and really bring it together. You basically just use that mortar to kind of press the herb and garlic against the sides of the bowl. And this is great, because as you can see, everything is now really being pushed and forced into the sides of the bowl, making it much finer and marrying all these flavors together. Then basically just take some of that lemon juice, pour that right in. I brought this from home. These are just Calabrian chilies in a jar. One of my favorite things on earth. Let me show you what they look like. So if you can't find the Calabrian chilies in a jar, which I highly recommend you try to, because they're so good. Oh, this alone is so yummy. I'm not gonna eat it, it's too spicy, but it's really good. I might add a little bit more. Then you can use any, you know, if you don't have this, you can use any dried chili you might like. Let's go ahead and bring it all together. Uh, remember I already added the salt, so I'm not gonna add any more of that. The only last thing I'm gonna do is add a nice amount of olive oil. It looks a little bit like chimichurri, but it's salsa verde. And it's so good with fish. It's actually good with almost anything. But this is my favorite sauce. So when you come back, hopefully that fish will be ready. We'll pull it out of the oven. But of course, it's Easter, so we have a ton of food to make. So for more Easter fare, come right back and quickly. Chef Michelle has more from the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Soflo Taste is back in two. Welcome back to Soflo Taste where I'm celebrating Easter. Do you know where the traditional Easter egg hunt comes from? It's said that early Christian missionaries hid Easter eggs painted with biblical scenes for children to find. The children would find the eggs and tell the story associated with the paintings. Therefore, early Easter egg hunts helped children learn about the significance of Easter. So let's get back to the food part of the Easter celebration. Believe it or not, our fish is ready. That was fast. Let's show everyone how beautiful this comes out, especially see when you score it. It just gets kind of puffy and beautiful. And all those spices are really in there. So you can do one of two things. You can either take out all these beautiful herbs that we stuffed in, or you can leave them there. I find that if you do take them out before you serve the fish, it does make to easier serving at the table. So with a spatula, I just removed basically that whole thing. And let's go ahead and pick up our fish and as gently as I can, place it on a platter. So then we have our salsa verde. Let's go ahead and spoon this beautiful, not very spicy by the way, it's more flavorful than anything, salsa verde over our fish. And then finally, because I just have to do it and it's tradition for me, just a nice drizzle of a good extra virgin olive oil over the top and some sea salt. And there you have it, a gorgeous snapper for Easter dinner. All right, let's jump right into a little side dish that I have been so excited to make for all of you. Look how beautiful this cauliflower is. It's just the perfect time to get a gorgeous cauliflower. The one thing I almost never have done 
is bread cauliflower, and it's so yummy. If you have never tasted it, when you cut off the bottom part of the cauliflower, these pieces are actually delicious. Slice these up nice and thin and saute them or pickle them. You won't believe how good they are and you'll be so angry with yourself that you ever toss them in the garbage. So let me go ahead and cut the core, but keep all those good leaves. Okay, just slice this up. The best way to cut a steak is by starting about a quarter of the way in and cutting a nice center good piece. Now this is what you would call a cauliflower steak. And if you want, you can absolutely bread this whole and serve it and it's delicious. But I'm gonna cut it a little smaller because I just really wanted to do a side dish with you today. So I'm just gonna do bigger pieces of cauliflower. So for the breading procedure, I have regular flour here or of course gluten-free flour if that's the way you're going these days. Add a little bit of garlic, onion powder, and paprika for just a little added flavor to your flour and just mix that in real good. You can also add a little salt if you want to at this point. Let's go ahead and add pieces of cauliflower into our flour, our seasoned flour. You're supposed to have a wet hand and a dry hand but I always mix them together <laughs> and make a big mess. Um, anyway, so I guess this is gonna have to be with my wet hand. So I'm going into my egg wash. Just so you know, in the saute pan that I'm about to cook this in is ghee, it's half ghee and half grapeseed oil. I really wanted the butter flavor without using butter because it's gonna over caramelize. Once you have the egg pretty much stuck onto the cauliflower with a dry hand, I'm gonna go ahead and put the breading on it. So this is panko. We run this in a food processor for about a second just so that it makes it a little finer and it really coats anything really well. See, I mixed it. All right, forget it. I'm going dry and wet. I'm just a big old disaster. So let's go ahead and bread that. Let's start frying it. So I have this on about a medium heat at this point, not too high because I want to cook the center of the cauliflower. And that's another way you can make this, by the way, if you want to. You can actually steam or boil the cauliflower first if you like your cauliflower a little less crunchy than mine is gonna turn out. And that way, you can just go ahead with the same breading procedure after you partially cooked your cauliflower so that it's a little bit more tender. All right, everyone, I'm gonna keep on frying. And when you come back, I'll show you how I'm gonna finish this dish and of course, move on to a new one. I'm not gonna tell you anything about it so that you're surprised when you come back. See you in a minute. Chef Michelle will be right back. Stay tuned for SoFlo Home Project and me, Elena Capra, next. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste as I give you an Easter dinner menu. As I always am, I'm here at the wonderful world of JA in Coconut Creek, a great place dedicated to our kids. For more information, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to SoFlo Taste. Look how golden and crisp our cauliflower is. And I love, you know, the nice and crispy, creamy cauliflower to go with our beautiful fish that has all the spices and the lemon, just delicious. So if you wanna add a little something extra to the cauliflower, just take a little bit of mayonnaise with a little bit of maybe chipotle or whatever your favorite, either chili powder or the adobo from the chipotle is delicious. And you can either dot it on the top of the cauliflower like so, or you can put some around for those that don't really love mayonnaise or chilies. Then I'm just gonna put a little bit of Malden crispy salt over the top, and there you have it. I think it's just a beautiful combination with those two. So let's jump right into dessert, where we're gonna make strawberry shortcake. So for this, I'm just gonna give you the simplest, easiest biscuit recipe you could make. In the bowl, I have self-rising flour, 
I'm just going to add, I would say maybe at the most a teaspoon, you can have a half a teaspoon, it's up to you, of sugar, which normally biscuits don't take. But because this is a dessert recipe, I wanted to add a little bit of sugar and the tiniest half pinch of salt. Mix those three together really well. We're going to exchange a whisk for a fork and add in some cream. No butter needed. Then we're going to just mix this until it comes together. But remember, when you're making biscuits, you don't want to overwork it. You want this to be crumbly and just to come apart in your mouth. Once this just has just come together like this one has, we're going to use a little bit of flour on our what we call our bench or our table. And this is perfect because it's nice cold metal. I would not use a cutting board. Go ahead and turn over your dough. Then just adding a little bit of flour over the top. Let's go ahead and form this dough into a nice, I would say about a half an inch from bottom to top. And then using a little pastry cutter, you can pretty much use anything. I've used cups if I didn't have a pastry cutter. Go ahead and form little rounds. And you know what I need to do? I need to dip my pastry cutter into flour. That way it comes right off, like so. And then what you do is, because you would never ever throw away all this good stuff, you bring this back together and you form that again and then you keep going and you keep going until you basically run out of dough. And then you take a sheet pan that has a piece of parchment paper on top and then you spray that down with some cooking spray. Take a little bit of heavy cream and brush your biscuits with that and then add the sugar here onto the table so that none fall on your pan. And then gingerly pick these up and place them onto your parchment to bake. So come back, I'll show you how to actually put this all together and make a phenomenal, memorable, Easter beloved or any time of year strawberry shortcake. Soflo Taste celebrating, of course, Easter. So we are finally on dessert and I am making your strawberry shortcakes. Our biscuits are beautiful, they're caramelized, and I don't know how close you can get, Aldo, but you can see the gorgeous sugar in the raw sprinkled over the top, how it makes it glisten, and it gives it a great crunch to dive in there. So for the filling, I'm gonna give you a couple of options, uh, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I have some sliced strawberries. I love strawberries and oranges together, so I, I'm gonna take a little bit of the juice from the oranges. And this is a combination of a couple of different, I think this is mandarins, tangerines, and caracaras. But again, up to you how you wanna do it. So I haven't add, added any sugar here because I have sweetened whipped cream over here that we made. The other thing I love to do, because I grow so many herbs in my garden, is I love to rip a little bit of fresh mint into this strawberry and orange salad, but also basil, a little bit of basil because it's just the most delicate and beautiful flavor when eaten with a strawberry. So mix that all together and then you just, I cut these open, I just cut a couple of them open and I'm gonna put it on the plate to make it and I'll make two of them. So we'll put the bottom of the biscuit little bit of whipped cream right on top and then our strawberry orange and herb salad yummy so we have all these beautiful colors on our dessert which to me just is so befitting 
of the great finale to your Easter dinner. And there you have it. Thanks, Taste Buds, for watching today. Easter is a great time of year to wrap your recipes and your family in the coming of spring. Give these recipes a try, and maybe they'll become your Easter traditions, too. Next week, I'm going greens. That's greens, not green. I'm giving you a whole Soflo taste show devoted to recipes using leafy greens. Cabbage wrapped salmon, braised with chard, kale chips that are delicious, I promise, and a Buddha bowl with yogurt marinated chicken breasts. I'll give the recipes on the next SoFlo Taste. Now let's say good morning to design expert Elena Capra, host of SoFlo Home Project. Good morning, Elena. What's up next on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So if you love modern design and colorful artwork, you are going to love today's home tour. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we show you how clean lines and a neutral color palette were key to achieving the sophisticated and contemporary design. Thanks, Elena. Happy Easter. Looking forward to seeing more of that home. So my taste buds, please be smart, be safe, and be vaccinated. And stay where you are for SoFlo Home Project and Elena. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye, and good taste. No rabbit recipes.